All right, here's the second part of the day nine notes. And that has to deal with, again, segment lengths, but this time when the segments specifically are secants or tangent lines. So today we're gonna look at just when they're secants. Tomorrow's notes will cover when we have some tangents mixed in here. All right, this one's kind of fun to do. Colors is super helpful. Otherwise, label really carefully. But if you have two different colors, definitely take advantage of that. All right, I'm gonna label this first diagram using um, the outside piece here and then labeling the whole length, all right? So I'm actually gonna call this first part just the outside piece or out one, right? And then I'm gonna label this entire segment as the whole length number one. Now, if you're not great at those curly brackets, use a straight bracket, it's perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. The outer piece of the second one, let's do the same thing here. So outside part, number two, and then the entire thing we're gonna refer to as the whole segment or the whole secant part two, all right? How this rule works, it's really similar to the last rule we just looked at. The product of the outside piece of one secant times the whole length is equal to the product of the outside piece of the other secant times its whole length. So I'm gonna write it as the outside one times the whole length, number one, is equal to the outside length two times the whole length number two. Now it's a little bit much to write down. So sometimes you might even see us starting to simplify it to like outside times the whole thing equals outside times the whole thing. So I've seen it written as like OW times O equals O times W, or sometimes people even flip it around and call it whoa, whoa. It's just surely for entertainment after a while. All right, but you get the point. So what I want you to do is in the picture, I want you to label which parts are which. Right? And just use your colored pencil to help you. So on number one, I'm gonna slide on up here. The outside part of it, that's the six. So here's the out, right? The whole thing, that's actually the X right there. So the second part, the five and the seven, here's where you gotta be careful. The outside part, that's the five. The whole thing is not the seven. Think about it, if you put this together, if this piece is seven and that piece is five, add those parts together, the whole thing would be 12. So it's a really good idea to actually label this first. Otherwise your eyes will tend to jump to just plugging that seven in and that's not true. All right, now let's plug it into the formula. So first part, outside times whole. So outside times whole gives us six times X. And then the second piece of it, the outside part times the whole would be five and then times the whole length of 12. Let me slide up a little bit so you guys can see better. Okay, let's finish the calculation. Six times X, five times 12, that's 60, and then divide by six, X comes out to be 10. So that has to be the length of that whole segment up here. If I asked you for this part of it, you would now be able to work backwards and say, hey, if this is six and the whole thing's 10, 10 minus six, this part would have to be four. So you might be asked to solve for different things. All right, let's do one more of these guys together. All right, the second one right next to it, same thing. Think about what falls outside of the circle versus what would be the length of the whole darn thing. So for number two, the three is the segment on the outside. The whole thing, you gotta really think about this first part. If this length is X and that length is three, the total length, you don't multiply them, you add them together. So we would call it X plus three. That's going to be the whole length. All right, and now let's play the same game at the bottom. 
four is the segment on the outside. And then and the whole length is two plus four or six. And now as you go through, you don't have to label every single thing. I think sometimes just circling the numbers sort of helps. So if you circle the three and the X plus three, and then the four and the six, it kind of gets you in the mode of, all right, those are the things I'm multiplying together. So now when we come down here and do outside times the whole, that would be three times the X plus three. And then over here, when we do the outside times the whole thing, that would be the four and then times six. So all that matters is that you get the right pieces put together. Don't forget, you do have to distribute when you've got a set of parentheses and a binomial here. So this is 3x plus 9. 4 times 6 should be 24. Subtract the 9 over. So 24 minus 9. Feel free to use a calculator if you need it. Should be 15. Divide by 3. And x comes out to be 5. All right. There you go. So good luck with that. Again, make sure, write the formula down. Draw a picture to go with it, otherwise you won't know what the heck you're talking about. Right? And those are those short little notes. Your notes can be one page, maybe not even a whole page, but it still helps you figure out what did we do so that when the quiz time rolls around, you've got everything right there in front of you. All right, guys, great job.